All right, so I get a lot of questions about these Dell Optiplexes. One of my more com uh, one of my more popular videos on this channel is I did a case swap over this, and I took this and I popped the motherboard, CPU, and all that stuff, and I popped it into another case, made it look nice or pretty cool. And I get a lot of questions about that. You know, what did you do? What did you run into? And then in another video that I did, we upgraded one of the fans, and I had to use an adapter for that. And I get a lot of questions about that. So in this video, we're going to focus on all the adapters that you need to do the swap the benefits of this adapter and how they make this so much easier when you're deciding to take the motherboard CPU and put it into a case so you can have some blingy RGB or even have more room for better airflow so you can put better graphics cards, more hard drives, just whatever you decide to do with it. So we're going to take a look at all these adapters over here, how they work and everything, and we'll explain them one by one. So first things first, let's get this junk out of here. All right, so to kind of make this easier, so you guys can actually see how they work and what you're actually looking for. We're going to actually I take out the motherboard from this Precision. So this is a T-Precision 1700 motherboard. And this has most of the, what you'll see in most of these Optiplexes they, and Precisions. There's going to be some variants of it, but we'll give you the general idea of it. So the first adapter that we're going to take a look at is the CRJ Elect by CRJ Electronics. And it's the 5-pin female PC fan adapter cable. I like these, and the reason why I order these is because they're braided, and that looks so much better than ketchup and mustard. And if you're trying to swap this out to another case and go for a custom look, the details do matter. So if you run into this, and I've seen this with older and newer Dells over here, you're going to see this right over here. This is for the fan, and it also has for the CPU fan over here, but you see a 5-pin adapter. Now, mo typically fans are PWM, 4-pin, and 3-pin non-PWN. So you see this, what do you do? You're going to take this adapter right over here, which is right over here, it goes plugged in there, and once you have that plugged in, now you can run your 4-pin or even 3-pin fan connector. For example, Cooler Master makes this i7-1C, and this is kind of my go-to when I'm doing these Optiplex swaps for people, because, you know, everybody likes the RGB. This is a 4-pin PWN one, and it's RGB, and it has a little controller for RGB, so I usually tuck that behind the case, and then the fan will spin whatever colors I want. So I can use this CPU cooler on this Optiplex all by just using this adapter for this. Now, not all Optiplexes have these 5-pin proprietary connectors. They Some of them uh, do use the 4-pin ones, like I know the, uh, the third-gen Intels have it, the uh, Optiplex 3010 does that. So, like I said, take a look at your motherboard. If you see these, you're going to need to buy these adapters. If not, then you're going to be limited to the CPU cooler. You're not going to be able to put 120 millimeter fans. Not to say that you can't use the, um, the adapters for SATA to fans or Molex or whatever you want to do, but the issue that you will run into by not r using these is that you're going to get the the fan error. And if you get the fan error, then your computer's not going to boot up. I mean, it'll boot up, but you're going to have to press that uh, F1, F2 key every time just to get into Windows. So if you want to get rid of that headache, or if you're going to do this mod, do it right. Get this adapter. I pay, what, six or seven US dollars for this, and it makes it a lot easier. So let's go on to the next one. All right, so now the next thing that you're going to want to consider if you're doing your swap. This is based upon primarily if, if you're going to use a different video card, you're going to have to, you're going to need this adapter. But if you're going to use the onboard video card or a video card that doesn't require external power, PCI Express of power, then you're going to need to buy this adapter. So, for example, you can get a 1030, put that in here, and use the original power supply, or 1650, they have 1050 Ti, small form factor ones. You can pop those in there. You don't need to change the power supply. You can use the original power supply, and it would work fine. But now, let's say you want to put something like a 1070, a 1060, or you know something that requires PCI Express power, you're going to need this adapter over here. And let's talk about why. So the factory Dell power supply is an 8-pin it's an 8-pin adapter. And as you can see, our power supplies that typically we use are 24-pin adapters. So by using this adapter over here, we are converting the 24, the 8-pin to the 24-pin, which this looks like this, and it'll go right back into here. They'll marry up like that. And then by using an aftermarket power supply instead of the Dell OEM one, we're able to plug in our PCI Express power to our video cards and use 1070, RX 570, whatever video card variant you have. 
Uh, I haven't been able to find these that are all blacked or sleeved out. So typically, you know, I might, you know, wrap this up in some cloth tape over here, or you could depin them and just kind of do some wire sleeve. However you want to do it, you do have some options on it. But if you're going to be running a video card that requires PCI Express power, then you can't use the original Dell power supply, and you're going to have to go aftermarket, and you're going to need to buy one of these adapters marry them together and you'll be able to use any video card that you want to use for this so that's the other adapter that you need to do so now let's go on and let's talk about the final adapter for doing this case swap all right so now this is the most important thing that you will need if you're doing these case swaps so pretty much this is the front panel adapter kit for the dell optiplex slash precision this will work with the 7010, 7020, 9010, 9020, Precision's T1650, T1700, and the 3620. Now, this kit is for this type of motherboard. Now, this company does make these kits for the different variants, such as uh, you could get this for the 790 and the 990 Optiplex, also the Precision T1600. It does, they do make it for the 390, 3010, and 3020. So, depending on which one of those models you have, you would have to buy the kit that corresponds to it. Do they make this for other models? You'd have to check their website, but I know those are the ones that I've commonly seen. And if you don't have this adapter, then the other way that you'd have to do it is splice it. I have done a video on just doing the splicing and kind of tucking away the whole front panel IO, but this is so much cleaner and this is easier. So let's take a look at this real quick. Now I have done a separate review video on this. So if you want a more in-depth guide on it, definitely check out that video, but just kind of So just kind of to show you briefly what it is, this right here, this small one right over here, is going to go right into this connector up here. So if you look over here, this is actually where the power switch and everything goes plugged right over here for the LEDs. You can pin these out and find out which two pins are the power pin and then tap into them. And then you got to find some other way to uh, do some jumper wiring. It gets a little complicated, but it is doable. There are a lot of pinout guys that show you how to defeat that whole front panel IO error, but I found this to be the easiest. All you got to do is, and these are oriented, so make sure you mark your orientation on them, and have them correct, but pretty much this will go in like that. And there you go, it's done. And if you look, let's see if that comes in on camera, you have the markings for the power switch, the DIA LED, whatever that is, what is it? Whatever it is, is an LED over there, and there's a power LED over there. So those are the ones that you'll have to do. So then for this, so you can have your uh, front USB, your audio, so USB 2.0. Let's see if it gets on the camera. USB 2.0 audio in your hard drive LED. This is actually going to go right into this small pin factor over here. So you take these, and like I said, check the orientation. I'm just kind of putting these in loosely just to demonstrate, but when I do this final build, I always make sure I have the orientation correct. This pops in right over there, and now you have your front audio that you can use from your different case. You can use the USB 2.0, and you have your hard drive LED. And the cool thing about this is, is because the USB 3.0 uh, is a standard pin, all it is is going to go plugged in right over here. So this adapter makes this swap definitely so much easier instead of having to pin it out and having to guess. No more front panel I.O. error. A lot easier and a lot quicker. So this is the final adapter that you would need to do this case swap. So let's put this away. Let's wrap this up and we'll finish off this video. All right. So one more thing I wanted to talk about before we end this is graphics cards. I get a lot of questions about what graphics cards I can use with this. I have found just from my experience and you have to do some more research on your own, the third and fourth gen, you pretty much don't have too much of a limit of what graphics cards you can use. Number one, it depends on if you're using the original power supply and number two, bottlenecking. You'll have a CPU bottlenecking. I have found with the third, fourth gens and even the Xeons that are uh, comparable to it, to the i7s, a 1070 and an RX 570 has always kind of been a good balance for me for these. Number one, the price to performance on them. Number two, if I'm trying to flip this on computer and I'm gonna put a, sell it as a gaming computer, an RX 570 and a GTX 1070 works really well with it. Great 1080p performance on it and you don't run into that bottlenecking issues. I have people th seen, uh, seen people throw in a 2070, a 2060, 1080 Ti, and then you really start getting into bottlenecking and 
that's really going to degrade your performance and your experience and not make it smooth so as far as video cards for these like i said third and fourth gen intels and along with the xeon uh, counterparts 1070 rx 570 you can do an rx 580 i've seen that work and anything less than that you can pop them in there but the key is to make sure that you have the power supply adapter so you have pci express power and you'll be fine another thing to consider too is on these motherboards when you're doing the adding a video card make sure that you have the clearance now if you look at this motherboard over here let's say you get a triple slot video card for whatever reason you're probably going to run into some fitment issues right over here with the USB and the SATA so you got to kind of keep that in mind make sure the video card that you get doesn't run into this I have found that the uh, EVGA 1070s work fine with it uh, Asus Strix works okay decently but if you start getting into more of the two and a half two and a quarter slot cards uh, you're gonna have some clearance issues over here so two uh, two slot cards work pretty decent you'll clear it anything more than that you're gonna run into some clearance issues over here so just kind of keep that in mind so to sum up this video Dell Optiplex case swap these are the adapters that you're gonna need do you have to use them absolutely not you could wire this yourself you could figure out the pinout for the front IO yourself and the same thing with the power supply I've seen people just kind of botch their power supplies and do it so you don't have to do it but this makes it so much easier for here I paid six dollars for this adapter it's twenty dollars for the front IO and then another ten dollars for this one so tw uh, 20 30 36 so maybe forty dollars and this makes it so much easier so you got to kind of consider that if you're building this for yourself this is the way to go if you're going to do it for somebody else just kind of consider that forty dollars is what's going to go into your profit area as far as you know what you're trying to sell and make on it so these adapters makes this so much easier i definitely recommend them i'll put links down below so you guys can pick them up um harbin freight they've been awesome i mean they sell these things and i'm not sponsored by them by no means but i'll give credit to a good product these things work phenomenal and i've build and I've sold so many Optiplexes and it's been so much easier doing this ever since they've been making these so comment down below let me know your thoughts about these adapters do you use them are there any other adapters you think that we're missing that we need to discuss uh, let me know your experiences doing these Dell Optiplexes or precision swaps if you like this video definitely hit the like button stay tuned because the next video that's coming up we're actually going to do a complete guide swap showing you step by step on how to take this apart put it in another case, RGB, different case fan and everything, how simple it is to do so you guys could do it for yourself. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.